Hello, this is the second story from the book Ghost Stories of Shimla Hills, which is written by Minakshi Chaudhary. This story, that is the ghost on the railway line, revolves around the tunnel number 103, which is just about the railway station Shimla, on way from Samar Hill to Shimla. This story uh, from where the tunnel belongs is also known as Inviram Tunnel. Now here's the story. Amit looked with dissatisfaction at his table, empty except for a glass of water, a golden pen stand and a map of the Northern Railways. There was not one pending file on his table. Experience had taught him not to delay work if he wanted to avoid complications and tension. When will Mr. Sharma come? A man asked, peering from behind the half-open door. I am the station master now, Amit replied briskly. Mr. Amitabh Sharma has been transferred to Lucknow. The man opened the door and entered. Namaskar, sir. My name is Manoj Chauhan. I am a contractor. I am sorry, I didn't know that Sharma ji has been transferred. He left last week. Can I help you? Amit asked politely. You belong to which place, sir? Bangalore. Do sit down. Is it always so hot here? I thought the weather in Shimla would be cold. No, but today the temperature is abnormally high. Have you shifted into the official accommodation? No, not yet. Sharma ji has not yet taken his luggage. For the time being, I am staying in the railway rest house, he said and then added, How can I help you? I have an orchard at Kotgarh. I had brought a box of apples for Sharmaji. But as he has left, uh, should I keep it in your room in the guest house? Amit didn't want any gifts from an unknown contractor. Moreover, he had brought them for his predecessor. Was it meant to be some kind of a bribe? He wondered. He tried to refuse politely. But the contractor was insistent. Please, sir, it is just a gift from Himachalis. I will not take a no from you. Before Amit could say anything, he interrupted. Have you been around the town? Well, not yet. I get free by 7 o'clock in the evening. And after that, I just take a long walk, usually on the railway line towards Summer Hill. Don't do that. The contractor said abruptly. Why not? Amit asked, taken aback. It's not safe. Oh, it's all right. There's no train in the evening. Tunnel number 103 is dirty. But forget about dirtiness. You should not use the tunnels at night. His guest said agitatedly. I better leave. I will put the box in your room. I hope you like the apples, he said getting up. Amit stared at the closed door thoughtfully for some time and then got back to his work. The fragrance of apples reached his nostrils as he entered the guest room later that evening. He opened the box, took out a large red apple and bit into it guiltily. While he devoured the juicy fruit, he decided that when the contractor came the next time, he would pay for the apples. He had eaten two apples and I sat down to write a letter to his family when the pune walked in. Feeling hungry, Sahib? Pal Singh asked as he placed a tray of food on the table. No, not much. I had a couple of apples. You people are very lucky to have this fruit in abundance, he said, shutting the letter pad. You are right, Sahib, the pune said and left the officer to eat his food in privacy. I have had enough, Pal Singh. Take the tray away, Amit called. Yes, Sahib. Should I bring your tea now? No, I will go for my walk first. I'll have my tea when I get back, he said. A walk? Now? It is way late, Sahib. Forget the walk for today. Why? It's just nine o'clock. In cities, we are out till midnight, Amit said from the bathroom as he washed his hands. When he returned to the room, Pal Singh was still there with the plate in his hand. What is it? he asked. 
I am a small man, Sahib. You are a big officer. Please don't mind my saying. But here, no one goes for a walk so late. It is not safe. What are you talking about? Are there decoys here? Amit asked, smiling. Sensing that Sahib was in no mood to listen, Pal Singh decided to adopt a new approach. If you have to go, please don't follow the railway line through the tunnel. You can walk on the national highway. Dismissing the pun with an assurance that he would be careful, Amit bolted his room from outside and walked towards the railway line. What are they scared about? He wondered. He knew the crime rate in Himachal was negligible. The people were a satisfied lot, peace-loving, honest and sincere. Why should there be any problem going for a walk at night? He switched on his torch as he entered the tunnel. Immediately, he began to feel a bit, a bit cold. He wrapped his overcoat tighter around him. It was dark inside. Despite the torch light, he stumbled. Regaining his posture and balance, he stood there for a second, trying to decide whether to continue or to return. He decided to move on. After a few minutes, he emerged out of the claustrophobic chill of the tunnel into the open, fresh air. Then, for no particular reason, Amit began to feel scared. As he looked around, his fear increased. The dense jungle and the dimly visible railway line stretching into infinity like a thick coil combined to create a sense of dread inside him. Could there be wild animals here? The contractor and Pal Singh must have been referring to wild animals when they said it was not safe, he thought. Amit tried to calm himself and turned to go back to the rest house. As he looked at the tunnel, the black hole seemed intimidating, frightening. How was he going to th go through it? He felt his legs trembling. What's wrong with you? Are you mad? Just now you came through this thing. There was nothing there and there is no other option but to go through it to reach the comfort of your room. He said loudly to himself. Without waiting for any other foolish idea to enter his mind, he walked into the black hole. He could hear his heart hammering in his chest with every step he took. The darkness and the chill engulfed him. His mind stopped working. With laden limbs, he forced himself to move forward, continuously peering ahead to see how much further was the tunnel's opening. But he could make out nothing. Within seconds, terror had overtaken him completely and he sat down helplessly. The torch fell from his hands and rolled away. God help me, he sobbed. He had never experienced such fear in his life and he didn't even know the reason for his fear. Are you all right? Startled, Amit looked up. A man was standing a few feet away from him. He could just make out the outline of the man's body. His face was invisible. For some reason, Amit got the feeling that he was tall, very tall. Then he lost control of himself. As tears rolled down his cheeks, he didn't know whether he was crying in relief or in fear. I don't know what happened. It was all so sudden, the fear. It was as if I was waiting for something bad to happen, he said lamely a minute later. When he had got control over himself, get up, come with me, I will take you out of the tunnel. The man said, I felt trapped. I got the feeling that I would never be able to get out of this darkness. There won't be an opening and I would suffocate here only, Amit said in a terrified voice. Slowly getting up, how glad I am that you came along. I am the new station master here, he said awkwardly by way of introducing himself. The man remained silent. I have lost my torch. It must be somewhere here, Amit said, looking around vaguely. Leave it. Just follow me. The voice snapped. Startled by his tone, Amit did what he was told. In less than a minute, he could make out the end of the tunnel. Thank God we have reached. How long were you in this tunnel? 
I mean, were you going somewhere? He said conversationally as relief flooded him. I just wander around here. Trying to decipher what the man meant, Amit stepped out of the tunnel into the fresh air. He looked around for his companion, but there was nobody. It was as if he had come out of the tunnel all alone. He had no idea how he reached outside the tunnel. The next morning, when he asked Pal Singh about the tunnel, the peon told him that a few people had come across an Englishman's ghost in the tunnel. Amit had not seen the spirit's face, so he didn't know whether it was an Englishman or an Indian. But he had met him. There was no doubt about that. And for the next three years that he stayed in Shimla, he never went for walks in the night. Thank you.